Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeffrey. So I've had a few requests to make some more log seek smart block videos. And so I made this cool, or at least I think it's a cool quote management system. So oftentimes you're trying to record quotes from people on different topics and you want to search and be able to reuse them. So this is something that I made with log seeks inbuilt query function as well as the smart block plugin. So let's dive in and see what I built. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what it is exactly we're going to be building. Then I'm going to go through step by step how you can recreate it in your own graph. So there's two things that we're going to be building into LogSeq and that is the smart block that's going to allow us to add a quote. So when we run the smart block, we'll be prompted to add inputs where we can put the text of the quote, a link to the author, and then some of the different topics that the quote might be related to. Then when we click submit, you can see that we now have this block with various block properties that we're gonna be able to query so that we can create a query table that will pull in all of our different quotes throughout our system, as well as having columns for the author and topic that we can then use to sort and uh, review. So we can find a quote based on who or, or a topic that we're interested in. So this is what we're gonna be building in this video. Now let's take a look at all the steps we need to do in order to recreate it. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a template that our smart block is going to run. And the way that it's gonna look is like this at the end, but let's start from scratch and completely rebuild it so you can see what each of the different components are. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our parent level block for the template. I'll just call it test template. Now the next thing that we're going to add here is what is the block going to look like? And that is going to have this little quote symbol. And then in quotation marks, I'm gonna add this set input and then I'm gonna give it the name quote text. So this is what tells the smart block that we're gonna be looking for an input when we have that uh, pop-up come up. And the name that I put after the colon here is what's gonna be a label for that text box field. So we're gonna call it quote text, and then we're gonna close the smart block variable here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create some block properties. So if I shift enter, and we're gonna create an author, and then use double colon, and then we're also gonna create topic with the double colon. And the same way that we did with the set input for the quote text, we're gonna create some more input fields with the, for the author and the topic. So now we have the template ready to create. There's a couple things I want to make note of here. Specifically, when you're using block properties, if you don't have an entry in quotation marks and you separate them by commas, those are, those are gonna create pages to each of those different entries in the block property. So if I had, for example, uh, topic here and I said productivity and PKM, when I'm done, you can see that that actually created page references to those items. But if I put this in quotation marks, then this is not going to create those page links. So I don't want to create page links. So this is why I have here for this topic, I have the quotation marks added. So I don't inadvertently do that. So now to turn this into a template, I just right click on this parent level block and then I'm going to say make template, we'll call it a test template, and then I don't want to include the parent block, and then I will click submit. So now I have the template ready to call when I run the smart block. One other thing that I will show that you can do, so with the smart blocks you can set the input, you can also get the input as well. So if you're using the same input multiple times throughout the block that you're running, you don't need to type it in multiple times. So let's just say, for example, here, 
I'll just call this a test property. And I, if I wanted to get the quote text a second time, I can just use get input. Uh, and I'll use the same name as what I defined earlier. So now when I run this one, I will only have to input the quote text once, but I will be able to use it multiple times throughout when it populates. So let's see what that looks like. Now there's uh, a couple ways that you can run the smart block. You can either use a slash command. So if you click slash insert, you can click insert smart block. And then let's use my test uh, template that I have here. And so I will say, uh, quote, author, and I'm putting it in double brackets so that that will actually create a page link. And then the topic, I'll just say testing. And then when I click submit, you can see that the quote was added here in the main part of the block. But because I used that get input, the same thing that I entered was re-added down in that test property. So that's using the slash command to run it. You can also create a button with uh, this syntax here. You can also use a slash command to create a smart block guided. And you can see here, this is where you put in the template name, the button title, and whether or not you want it to be a sibling. So if I say my template name was my test template, the button title will be testing and then the sibling is let's set this to true and I will show you what that looks like so if I click here I'll just put in random things so you can see it is now a sibling of the button that I the smart block that I ran if I change this to false and run it here then you can see that it makes it a child of the smart block that you ran. So those are the two ways that you can run your smart block. So the last thing to do is to set up the query in LogSeq, which is really simple to do. All you need is this syntax using something that you uniquely identified the quote block with. In my case, this little emoji right here. So when I look at my query table, you can see all the quotes have that symbol. And now when I look at this query, I'm looking for anything with that emoji. I'm making sure to use this not bracket so that I don't pull in the item from the LogSeq templates page, which is where I have the smart block template set up. And you can also further refine this query by adding in additional search parameters, such as using this and bracket, I can look for anything that has productivity in it, either within the quote or within the topics themselves. So you can see here now all the topics have productivity in them. The other thing is that is case sensitive. So if I change this to a lowercase p, it's not gonna pull in all of the topics that have to do with productivity. It's only gonna pull in the quotes that have productivity with a lowercase p in them. So if I wanted to look for anything with productivity, either upper or lowercase, I could just call it productivity, and then I can pull in all of those items. So you can customize your search based on the quote, uh, grouping them together based on different search terms using this and function in the query here. Now you might be wondering, this table here doesn't look like the normal query table within LogSeq. And I have a few items that I have set up for some custom CSS. I'll include in the description below the video, the CSS that you can copy and paste into your own custom CSS file, which you can be found through the three bullets here, settings, and then edit custom CSS. So, but one that is I found really important is having these columns wrap instead of extending all the way off the page because some of these quotes can be quite long and this can push all the other columns off the page. So here is the custom CSS that I have doing different things to the query table. If you're just looking at the one for wrapping the text in the query table, 
this would be the line to add. But again, I'll put that down in the description down below so that you can copy and paste it and use it within your own uh, system. And then finally, one last note that I wanted to talk about, and that is intentional friction. So adding quotes this way, although the smart blocks makes it a little bit easier to add all the block properties and the emojis to everything, it still is a little bit of friction to run the smart block, put all in all the input fields, and that is purposeful. I don't want to capture every single possible quote that I come across. If it's too easy, then I'll dilute the relative value of each quote that I'm including in the system. So having a little bit of friction or making it a little bit harder to add those quotes means that I'm only going to be doing it for the most meaningful ones rather than just a blanket for everything that I come across. So that is my quote management system that I've created in LogSeq. First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Ariane Sani, the creator of the LogSeq Smart Blocks plugin. Initially, there was an issue with it populating block properties. I reached out to him on Twitter and within a couple hours, he had the plugin updated to be able to work so that I could create this system and video. So that's it for this video. As always, you can leave me some comments down below what you liked, what you found useful. If you liked this style of video, if you want me to keep trying to make new and interesting things with smart blocks to show off the different functionality and cool things that you can build with it. And that's all for today. I will see you all next time.